You're listening to SM Media, the number one place for exclusive Scottish football content. Hi everyone and welcome to the latest episode of the SM Media Scottish Women's Football Show. I'm Scotty Pike. It's an absolute pleasure to be your host as always. We have a full league card to look through. It's obviously going to be a busy weekend. It's been a busy weekend in the women's game. To join me to look back on this, I'm delighted to welcome the Queen's Park manager, uh, Craig Joyce. Craig, it's a pleasure to welcome you out to the show. Thank you very much for joining me. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, looking forward to having a, a chat about football. Because somebody who's no part of my coaching staff, so I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> It's good as well, obviously, because obviously you're a, a manager in the game. It's good to get your input and can other teams round about the league and obviously your own. But we will start. Obviously, it's been a disappointing weekend, uh, a disappointing week for Scottish women's football, obviously, getting out of the World Cup, qualifying. How disappointing was that? It was a real, real sore one, wasn't it? Aye, aye. I think when you look at it, um, I think there was a lot of hope and optimism run about it and got ourselves into a good position and, and just fell at the final hurdle. And... I was saying this to somebody yesterday, actually, um, gutted because you know so many players in the Scotland side, but also yeah. a, wee bit, a wee bit happy for the, some of the girls in the Irish team because you know them as well. So mm-hmm. mixed emotions, but at the same time, it's it's uh, we, we thought we were having another World Cup to look forward to, do you know what I mean? So yeah, uh, it was a tough one to get over. It was a tough one to get over. A really sore one, a really sore result. And I, I don't know how I can say is that four years we could be back again, we never know, but... We all obviously got on to the league action. It's been a busy weekend. There's been a lot going on. But I want to start with talking to you, Craig, about yourself. Obviously, last season, leading Glasgow women to promotion to the SWPL1 and obviously leaving and taking the job at Queen's Park. Mm-hmm. What can have happened there? Like, first of all, how big a, an achievement was that to to take Glasgow women up? Uh, massive. Um, maybe not until you've... You've actually sat back and looked at it and thought maybe it's one of the biggest things that's happened in Scottish women's football or Scottish football. Um, we never had a penny. There was it was all just hard work and, and graft and um, it, it it was a proud occasion. But at the time, I, I self admitted that I never took it in. I never um, I never took on board what had just happened and what was going on and even on the night of like. We, we went out and had a, a bit of a celebration, as you could imagine, and never really took anything in either. Had a, a, a good chat with everybody that night and, and maybe a bit of a speech if you want. I don't I can't actually remember the speech made, to be honest okay. with you, but uh, I think it was quite an emotional one for everybody. And we were uh, massively proud because there was a few times during the season a lot of people said, ah, they're not going to do it. It's Glasgow women, they won't do it. They're no good enough, but we knew we were good enough. Um we just get maybe a wee bit unfortunate during the season with some longer term injuries and some suspensions and stuff, and that's part and parcel with the game. So it's up to us to to find ways to get run about it. And we dug our heels in and proved that that we were good enough. So what an occasion it was, and especially for some of the players who had worked with for a long time yeah. and some of them who were were just new, like to achieve that as a group was immense, man. And uh, you then I'd probably be. The one to admit, and Ian would probably tell you this as well if you spoke to him, were thought straight after the Birmingham game moved on to like Prem 1, what do we need to do? How do we then? And then obviously, um, it was just, it, to be honest, it was a case of the, the two of didn't really agree um, with what way we wanted to go. And and it was quite sad actually when when I think the realisation came that I wouldn't be there um, for Prem 1 when I, when I Genuinely thought I was going to be there for Prem One, so it was quite sad. Um, so you go for elation, eh? a bit, a bit of sadness and a bit of staleness. And my thoughts after that were just, just kick back and chill, man. Um, don't know if my, my, my partner on that would have thought that. <laughs> my <laughs> thoughts were kick back and chill and see what happens. And I still, I still look out for them. I've been to watch them a few times as well, just because I'm still a, a fan of them. To be honest with you, it was the first club that gave me a. I shot at, at women's football and mm-hmm. I know I was at City for years but this was my first senior job and I always have an affinity and a, a connection with the club 
And how did the Queen's Park job come about? Do you know something that was random because there was a couple of jobs that, that came about? Um, obviously, I had an agreement with, with Glasgow that I wouldn't announce it until they had time to um, bring in a new manager. Um, so I spoke to the players and stuff and not the way I wanted to. I wanted to meet, meet them in person and do it, but mm-hmm. the, the turnaround was, so I had to leave them a voice note, which was a bit crap, do you know what I mean? Um, a bit shitty. Oh, sorry, mate, can I swear on this? No, good. Uh, sorry, mate. It was a bit, I'm terrible for that, mate. I'm really bad for that, but it was it was crap. Um, and it was just one of them. I'd spoke to a couple of clubs, and there was one club in particular who I was really interested in going to. Um, the talks went on for a while, and then broke down, and then went on, and then broke down, and then went on, and broke down. And I put out that, um, that I was away and stuff, and Queen, Queen's Park got in touch quite quickly, actually. Um, and you said, would you like to meet? And I was like, aye, I'm open to listen to anything. Like, I would have listened to any offer for anybody at that point, just because I want. I said I wanted to be a bit but deep down, I think I still wanted to be involved. Yeah. Um, and I'd explored a couple of different options with clubs, maybe just doing wee bits and bobs for them and stuff, but that's not really me, because once I'm in, I'm in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I met Queen's Park, and they said, well, we'd like to offer you the job, what do you think? And I'd said to them, I, up, I spoke to a couple of other teams, and they were quite honest. They're like, "Do you mind no taking up the offers at the other teams? Do we go and sort a couple of things on our end, dotting the eyes and crossing the t's, so to speak?" And I said, "Not a problem." And they said to me, "They come back to me the next morning, and you know yourself with football, you're like, right, no problem." And genuinely, I was sitting at my breakfast the next morning, and the offer came in. So I was like, "Well, it's a project um, mm-hmm. that I want to get my teeth into." And it was a relatively quick turnaround but if you think about it it was six weeks later so you'd already missed the boat in terms of getting yeah. some players and stuff that you were after but it was a, we knew it was a challenge we knew it was going to be a big job but we knew it was one we could get our teeth in and, and kick on so um, we quickly had to say to the other clubs that we weren't interested and we were moving on um, which I felt bad but at the same time we never led anybody on it was it was quite quick and you see the progression Queen's Park have made, particularly in the men's game in the past few years. Like they're a really ambitious club. They've got a lot of plans, yeah. obviously lesser handed and things like that. But how impressed have you been with the kind of setup at Queen's Park since you've been there? I think it's a blank canvas. Mm-hmm. That was the one thing that, that caught me. Um, the same with Glasgow when I went in there. It was a blank canvas. So it was a chance to imprint your your style, what you want, make the club stylish and make it attractive. And the first job was to make it sustainable, obviously, because yeah. The team weren't they, they're not achieving, um, but they weren't achieving last season. So we had to sustain it and improve, and that's still that's still part of year one. Do you know what I mean? It's a, a three year gig, and the year one for me is sustain, improve, and build. Um, and the the club of the club of gave us the canvas, and and they're they're trying to amalgamate things and and push forward. And obviously they, they've got lesser, which is a new stadium that's built and it's absolutely magnificent. Yeah. Um, what a facility and what a surface it's going to be once once it opens up. But um, just now we're we're moving away slowly in the background, quietly as well, and and working hard. In fact, probably harder than I've worked in any role yet. So working really hard, eh? And you mentioned there obviously about the the kind of the first season. It's all about building that kind of work in progress. Four points for six games. It's it's going to take time. You look at the league as a very competitive league, but yeah. If I was to give you that at the start of the season, what would you have said? No happy. To be brutally honest with you, um, if you see all the games, they've been tight, with the exception yeah. of the Rangers game, which is expected. Um, yeah. And even at that, we had a great performance against Rangers and people would be thinking, 5-0, you're mental. But I think if you offer anybody a 5-0 against Rangers, they would bite your hand off. Um, and we made Rangers work that day. We made them work and they, they, their qualities had to come through and show through and it was... It's impressive when you, you get out of the, the storm of the game and watch it afterwards and analyse it and you think, what the hell? They did, do you know what I mean? They did work. Mm-hmm. They, there, there's some real real talent, real quality in there. And <laughs> they're a well-oiled machine. So. But we, as we we were targeting more than what we're on just now. Um, I think if everybody looked at it, that's kind of what the outside world would expect for Queen's Park. Um, take, take myself and Ian and the staff away and that's what they would look at and think. But we're a wee bit more ambitious than that. The, the first game of the season, we were unlucky, conceding the last minute with our own goal. Um, Gap Cairn, we've, we've obviously won, and you thought that was your moment to go and kick on. It's not happened. 
Sterling again was another goal in the last couple of minutes after being down twice and coming back into the game. Um, and then the Bottomure game was a bit of a weird game. Yeah. Sucker punched uh, three and ten minutes, I think it was. We get caught away and, and then after that, we've came into the game and, and could have maybe clawed back a draw for that. But that's probably the first one that we looked at and thought we really didn't deserve to take much for the game. A point would have been generous to... Um, and then the command up game get cancelled, obviously, because of the Queen uh, mm -hmm. passing away and stuff, which was a bit of a blessing in disguise as we had so many players on holiday. Um, but we had enough players to go and field the team and play the game, which we would have done. And then, obviously, you, you get drawn against Rangers in the Cup after a great performance against these five, which could have went one or two ways. It could have knocked the stuffing out the players or it could have gave them a wee bit of a boost. And I think it went the second way. I think they got a bit of a boost knowing that they can compete at that level. Mm -hmm. Um and again, people say 5-1, but it's it's the manner of the performance that day. We could have went there and crumbled after the first goal or the second goal, and we never. We fought it out and conceded two goals in injury time in the first half and second half. Yeah. And then obviously Sunday, which was a, a very odd game. Um, we, we go into every game wanting three points. There's, there's no part of my makeup to go and no want three points. So I want three points in every game, regardless of the situation. And that might sound absolutely mental, considering we're just in the job and it's a big job and it's a big build, but that, that's what we're after, that's the standard, and that's what we're not expecting, but we need to fight to, to get the three points in this league because we've been here before, so we we know what, what it takes. Um, but so have the other teams, so mm -hmm. that's the advantage they've got as well. So, yeah. But there's some top sides in this league, man. This, this league gets dis disowned because we're no fancy and we've not got Rangers Celtic and... City and all the top teams in it, but it's a top league. It's a top, top league down here. Yeah, we'll get your thoughts in there, obviously, the game on Saturday, uh, Sunday later yeah. on. But the SWPL1, we'll get through the, the results and obviously just get through the games. Celtic mm -hmm. 7, Glasgow women nil. Partick Thistle 1, the United nil. Hearts 3, Aberdeen nil. Hamilton nil. Glasgow City 6, Motherwell 2, Spartans 2 and Hibs nil. Celtic 1. Let's start with Celtic, a massive 7-0 victory over Glasgow women. Clifford with a double, Otto Hayes, Jacinta, Natalie Ross and Clarissa Larissi with the to get a 7-0 win. Celtic obviously takes them to seven wins for seven games and Rangers and Glasgow City have obviously kept that going as well, but emphatic again from Celtic. They're just when Charlie Wellens left, we obviously we said on this show, would Celtic be able to play replace those goals? And a big thing was always where they were the players who maybe weren't scoring as many last season, would they be able to to add more to their game and they certainly are. I mean, Clifford coming in, she scored a double. Natalie Ross, that would be a massive goal for her coming back from injury and things like that. Mm. Emphatic performance from Celtic uh, Sunday. Yeah, I think everybody expected the win, didn't they? Um, and I'm, I'm not saying that to this Glasgow women, but <coughs> Glasgow have obviously learned as well for, for obviously the first game of the season against Rangers and, and they've, they've kept it tighter and I've, I've not actually seen any of the game yet. Um, so it'll be interesting to see, but I think we we Celtic, it was everybody looked at Wellens and thought, well, if she can go on and do that again, then they're challenging. Then when they lose her, it's like, well, who are they going to replace her with? Mm -hmm. And Laris, he's been fantastic. Yeah. Um, that was a bit of an inside scoop I'd got after speaking to them and they, they'd said about her playing up top and I was like, oh, that's interesting. She's rapid. She's quick, man. She's she's lightning. Um, but they're a top team, aren't they? Celtic are a really top team and you can't take anything away from them. They're another well-oiled machine with the, the other two that are up there as well. So and it's that thing as well. Victory. It's see like Otto scoring Hayes. That there's their goals are spread out across the team. Like Chloe mm -hmm. Craig scored a few goals as well. There's they have a lot of really good players. And the thing with Fran Alonso is he's blended them all together. Yeah, and that's the thing that impresses me. And I think a lot of people do fancy Rangers to win the league. And I think probably it's hard to disagree with that, but. Celtic are certainly making making it a tough fight. I mean, they're all all they can do is keep track, keep track, and try and win their own games and score goals because the goal difference could be massive come the end of the season if they, they carries on like this. But I mean, seven goals you, you can't ask for anything more than Fatty. No, and the clean sheet as well. The clean sheet's the the one that they'll be after, and they're a good side. I can remember when we first went to Glasgow and we played Celtic, my first competitive game, and someday I can't remember who it was, but it was a a journalist asked me after the game, well, Jink, Celtic will be there and this and that. And you're thinking, he's just in the door. Give him time. Mm -hmm. This is the thing. Give him time. And listen, they play some great football. I've watched yeah. Celtic quite a lot. They play some fantastic football. Something that 
teams will aspire to, um, but they're strong, they're athletic, and they're difficult, very difficult opponent to try and stunt on their day. Glasgow women, from the, was it always going to be a struggle like for them to kind of go up to the, that next level? I know obviously you're, you're probably the better man to ask than anybody. Um, the performances have been so, like the results have been so poor. Like, yeah. Are you surprised at how emphatic they've been, the defeats have been? Um, I think when I can speak for two points of view in this, firstly, as somebody who knows the club and knows what we wanted to do, and you were always up against it when you you were going to go and play the top teams, mm-hmm. but the, the plan and the purpose. But you've, I think what a lot of people need to remember about Glasgow is they've, they've lost a lot of top players as well. Mm-hmm. And the probably the majority of their backroom staff. So it's it's a big change. It's no it's a big change going into a big league. It's not just a we've brought a new manager in and I, I feel for Andy in that respect. Um and I think it is that, that they've lost the core, if you like, the spine of the team. So any team I think that loses the spine of their team, whether they're just promoted or not, is going to find it difficult. Um but I think there there's when you go and see them, there is some stuff that that you can be positive about. But um, I think it is it's difficult. It is difficult, and it's also difficult because I was there, so I don't want to speak out of turn or anything like that. And I've got nothing but respect for them. So uh, it's difficult, especially against the top teams. But as I said earlier, that's they've half the deficit for the Rangers game, um, which was a baptism of fire, really. Yeah. Um, and you knew it was always going to be difficult. But again, Airdrie at Excelsior is a massive pitch as well. And, and so was Broadwood so they, they managed to stunt that and I, I think they were down to 10, 10 players at one point as well weren't they so to come away with it less than, than what most people probably would have thought was was a bonus for them as well but I think for them it's a case of maybe trying to get some points on the board now Yeah absolutely Yeah, we'll move into Glasgow City obviously keeping yeah. keeping their unbeaten run going seven straight wins Lauren Davidson with a hat trick Chinchia, Kozak and Megan Foley with a goal as well great to see that a 6 now one away to Hamilton Lauren Davidson's in the form of a life. I mean, that's mm-hmm. another three goals. She's she's really turning into a, a kind of top player this season. Yeah, she is. She's. Do you know what? She's always had that. I know she's always been a fantastic player. Good kid as well, but she's always been a really, really good player. Um, and I'm so happy that she's she's starting to get the accolades that she deserves and scoring goals as well. And that's as a forward player, you always seem to get judged on scoring goals, don't you? It's not about your work rate or anything yeah. else. And, only ever seem to be when you're not playing too well, people start talking about how much work you do for the team. Um, but she's scoring goals. And again, they're another team that can add goals for all over the park, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. As well, with Megan Foley as well, getting a goal and Chinchilla. Mm. I mean, Chinchilla, I, I think we've we've maybe not spoken about Chinchilla enough, but she is a top player on her day. She's incredible. She played against us last uh, the last season in the cup run and she was excellent. She was... We, we decided to try and go toe-to-toe, which was not our best decision, but we thought we're not going to get another opportunity, so we're going to go for it in the League Cup, and City were excellent that day. Joe Love was in her pomp, scored, I think, two or three for about 40 yards, man, so uh, they're a top side, and they've got top players, but Chinchi is, she's frightening. She's exciting. She's a, she's one of them players that you pay to go and see. Absolutely, yeah. Hamilton, Hamilton will, will look at them as well. Obviously, a disappointing day, but when you look at the table, they're sitting in six points from seven games. They're five points clear of Aberdeen in eleventh, and I don't know if Hamilton will ever look at look at it this way. I'd like to know, but the five there's already a bit of a gap from eleventh mm-hmm. and twelfth. They will be they will be hopeful just to get a couple of wins in the board and just further that gap because Aberdeen and Glasgow yeah. women in particular have really struggled so far. Yeah, definitely, and I think knowing Gary and and Robert well enough, I think they'll know. They'll keep an eye on what's happening behind them, but they'll be trying to look forward as much as they possibly can. Um, they, they've got some good players in there, some really good players, um, and they've kind of changed what they're doing a wee bit as well. And I've watched them a few times as well. And funny story, I actually turned up to watch them last week and they never had a game, so that was a good laugh. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> but no, they were um, they, they they're a good side, but they'll try and look forward. They, I don't think, I think you've always got the thing where you do look behind you, but once you've got a bit of momentum. And they've had a bit of a tough run it as well. They've mm-hmm. obviously played the, the top sides in there as well. So they'll pick up points. They're a resilient team as well, so they'll pick up points. Yeah, absolutely. And you look at that, we'll, we'll maybe touch on this later on, but you look at that from 5th to 10th, there's only three points between it, so it's a very yeah. tight kind of bracket in there. But Rangers, they had to work for their victory to keep pace on the 
to stay at the top of the table. A 1-0 one away to Habs. Tessel Medag, I don't know if you've seen it, an unbelievable goal. Yeah, I've seen it. Brilliant goal. Uh, screamer. With Rangers, I think we've, we've obviously expected that they've just been fatic all season. And mm. There's times you need to dig deep and have, I think Habs deserve a lot of credit. They'll be gutted not to get some out of the game, but they made Rangers work for their victory and it, I think a theme of the day for Rangers on Sunday was just get the three points. It doesn't matter in performance, just get the win. Mm-hmm. I think that they're going to get they're going to get challenged. Um, I know Mark in that well enough now that he's he's not expecting to go in and steamroller every game. He's they're level headed and they're approaching, and it's a tough place to go. Hibs. I know they've just moved to Meadow Bank as well. So, mm-hmm. but Hibs needed time. It's a bit like when we were speaking about other time teams and maybe Fran at the start of his reign at Celtic. Hibs needed some time because they never got their players in the door. Mm-hmm. So I think it needs a bit of realism. Um, and Dean came under a bit, of, a bit of fire at the start, but it, it was a heavy defeat against Celtic. You can't take that away from it. It was maybe the game was just came a bit too early for them because yeah. they just got players in the door that week. So <laughs> it's always going to be difficult trying to gel and mould things. But Hibs are a, they're a steady team. They're, they're a solid team as well. And they've got some real quality in there. Some real, real quality in it, Hibs. Um, so I'm no surprised that they made it difficult for Rangers. Um, but it was, the what a free kick it was. It was unbelievable. It was, I I, if you wanted to place a ball with your hand where you wanted to go, that was it, wasn't it? So, I don't think you could have had it any better and I don't think it could have been no, as sweet. I think if you'd, told, if you'd said to her, pack, pack a place you want this to go, it, would have, it was just a brilliant goal. Brilliant goal. A goal while they've won in any game, but obviously yeah. it means Rangers staying, stay unbeaten, seven wins from seven games, 21 points. Hearts are now sitting fourth, three points clear of Spartans, a 3 0 win over Aberdeen. Trialist, who's had a busy weekend, we'll maybe touch on Trialist <laughs> later on. Uh, well, Samson, please do. Samson, later, Samson made it two, and Kiara Grant made it three. Yeah. Hearts, a big one for them, obviously gives them a bit of breathing space in fourth. That, that, again, Hearts are a good side. Mm-hmm. I think I think what um, Eva's done very well is she's recruited well. And she needed time to recruit well as well. It's this time thing we keep talking about, eh? Um, She needed time to recruit. She needed, uh, it's a cliche in football, but you need a couple of windows now that we've got them um, to recruit the right players. And I think what she's done is she's got some some very experienced and quality players in around about the youth that's at Hearts because they've got some great players that have came through their system, obviously. Um, Trialist is a funny one. I think they know who it is anyway, but uh, it's good to see her back playing and enjoying football again. Um, but again, it's hard because I know the guys uh, Aberdeen with Emma and, and Gav as well, and, and the players and Aberdeen are a good side. I know they've changed some things. I've been this really season. surprised with how poor they've started because last season yeah. you were you were looking. I know they've got the thing of kind of attracting players and things like that, but I thought they would be better than they've started. Yeah, yeah. I think you, you always expect them to do well. They are a good side, and we've came up against them a few times with. With Glasgow and it was always a great game when we played them. But I think when you you look at maybe the the difference that that's happening with other teams, we never know what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, but when you look at the difference uh, with other teams and they seem to be pulling away a wee bit, and it is quite surprising because I watched Aberdeen in pre-season um, and they played really well. Mm-hmm. They played really really well, but I do know they are changing the shape and stuff like that as well. So that takes a bit of time. Um, and see if they can maybe blend that in. But I think Hearts might be a wee bit of a surprise package for everybody this season. Yeah, um, it's uh, obviously just a massive one for them. A 3-0, uh, you can't ask for any more at home. A 3-0 win at home against a team that's struggling yeah. and getting that. There's obviously a massive gap to the top three, but I think it for Hearts, it's just finishing best of the rest. Mm-hmm. It's, it is, it's, I think you get to that point where if they can get their noses in front and again, no look backwards and keep looking forwards and get a good run, because you see their games against... Um, Rangers and stuff this season as well it's been tight yeah. so they'll be looking to keep them as tight as possible and then maybe trying to nick something but then winning the rest of the games around about them yeah, being absolutely. consistent in that as well absolutely huge win for Partick Thistle a 1-0 win over the D United Cara Henderson with the only goal of the game again probably a, a tight game two two teams probably hoping for something out of the game Partick Thistle first of all how big a win is that for them huge huge I think they needed the needed the win um, to kick them on. They're they're a good side. Again, another team I watch quite close. I say I watch quite close. I watch everybody quite closely to be honest with you. But um, there's an added interest in there as some of the Glasgow girls went to Partick this winter. Yeah. So, um, and you've worked with them for quite some time, so you like to keep an eye on them and see how they're doing. And 
I know the coaches in there as well, um, and some of the other girls. So that's a massive win, and I'm not actually surprised that Cara scored because she's she's added that to her game last season, mm-hmm. um, and she's a dangerous player if you get on the right areas, like anybody is. But she's got a knacker just turning up at the right time. Yeah. Um, I think she scored earlier in the game as well to get chopped off. Eh? I'm not so I sure. I think she that does. Was, I think you're right. Yeah, I'm looking just looking was, at the play by play, and I think they had a goal that's allowed. Uh, I'm not so sure it was offside, but then again, I'm I don't like. Uh, to be two Jewish based referees and that, so I'll leave that one alone. And Dundee United are another, they're a solid team, man. They're, I was they're keen to get side. your thoughts. I was keen to get your thoughts then because they yeah. sort of obviously ran away with the league last season in the, the second division. But yeah, when you look at the squad, it's very much the same as it was last season. So they they were yeah. definitely more equipped. And do you think they've handled their, their kind of push up well? Again, it's another situation where they might find it hard to attract, and um, being in the area that they're, they're in, but. For them, it's it's about consistency. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever seen a team as consistent as they were last season. Um, we went toe to toe with them a couple of times. In fact, four times we played each other, and twice they beat us, and twice we drew. Yeah. And every game you could say it was a game. It was it was a ding dong. It was a good old fashioned end to end game. But I think it, there was some real quality on show for the two teams. And twenty points maybe does us injustice, but it just shows you how consistent they were. Um, we we drew a few games and obviously we lost two games to them but I think it was the draws that they kind of done us in the end of being closer I mean if you look at Christmas time there was six points between the two teams Aye. so the Christmas period kind of done us in a wee bit and that's what I referred to earlier with injuries and at one point I went nine out with COVID and that's not an excuse but nine out of squad with COVID is an absolute bomb scare mm-hmm. and that's the worst news that you want do you know what I mean oh I've got COVID you're like, right, okay, how do we work this one? And you've no use team to pull on. So, but United are a steady team. Graham's good at what he does as well. So they'll they'll pick up points here and there. Um, and this will be delighted to get a win out of that because Dundee United are a stuffy team. Stuffy, stuffy team. Very hard, very resolute. And they've got some quality as well. Let's not forget McGinley's dynamite, by the way. Yeah, really you get you've got Tammy Harkin, Cassie Kuyper. There's so many good players in that team. McLaren group. and Robin McLaren. Smith, they're yeah. dangerous players. So. Yeah, there's so many good players in that team. And I think they'll... They've handled it well. I mean, you'd probably, I mean, at the start of the season, I think we were saying, like, who's going to struggle? And I think somebody mentioned in the United, and I was like, I, I think they've got the squad. I think they are mm-hmm. out of the two teams. I think they're more than capable of of going up, like, yeah. and to you know, making a good account of themselves. But I mean, they've started well. Again, just a couple of wins in the board will maybe take them into a better position. But the final game of the weekend in the SWPL one. Motherwell 2, Spartans 2. Spartans were 2 now up at half time, but Motherwell fought back. Two penalties from McDonald, McDonald and Goo. Rescued a point for Motherwell. What a massive fight back. I think it was two penalties as well, but a huge, huge point for Motherwell, but Spartans will be gutted they didn't get all three. Definitely. Um, I think you, with Spartans, with it, Sounding disrespectful, you know what you're getting. You know what Debbie's team's going to produce, and you know the quality and threat that they've got. Galbraith for me is an absolute worldy up top. Yeah, she scored as well too. Uh, so yeah, smart, he's, get he's fantastic. Well. Yeah, and smart, very experienced player, and 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 solid in the middle of the park. But Spartans are another good side, and 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 for Motherwell, I've also got an invested interest there, obviously because I know Paul and Leanne really well, and mm-hmm. um, Lucy went there, Lucy Ronald and Joe Addy's there as well. Yeah, so. that's right. Yeah. And they play just up the road for, for me, so I like to dip into them because we've got a few breaks in the season, so I like to just see how they're playing and see what's going on. And and I'm not actually surprised um, that she scored for them because she's, she's been the talismanic fat figure for them this season and popping up with important goals. So for um, Kayla to go on and score and, and do what she's done, she's just really producing what she's been doing for the start of the season. So you don't, you're not surprised when the gift pops up we are celebration. Um, but what a comeback. Two down Absolutely. and sometimes it's difficult because Spartans are a stuffy team as well. So yeah. It's difficult. But um no, it's a fantastic result. And um again, Spartans will be disappointed they've not took the points. But as I said, I've not seen the game yet. But if if you watch it, um I'm pretty sure Paul might be a bit disappointed he's not went on and took the three as well. I think you'll be, I think you're right there. But again, another busy weekend in SWPL one. SWPL 2, Montrose 3, Bottom Year 2, East Fife 1, Queen's Park 1, St Johnson 0, Kilmarnock 0, and Stirling Uni 0, Gart Cairn 3. We'll start with obviously Queen's Park, a 1 1 draw. Oh, did we need it? <laughs> I, I'm like I didn't, mate. How okay. did it go? How, what was your overall take in the game? Because 
East Fife have obviously they've not started great. That was obviously only their second yeah. point of the season. Was that a gotten day? It was. It was a tough day. Um, I think we knew we were going to be in for a game when we went up there. Um, East Fife are they're solid. I know they've conceded goals and they've only picked up two to- points, but they're a very solid team. They're, they're a, a tricky team to play, and I tell you what, they'll take more points off people up there, um, especially with that win coming in off the sea as well. So, but um, it, it was a frustrating day. It was one of them days where nothing really came for us, but at the same time, we've, we've said this to a million people now. You normally get one chance at the end of a game. We had five and never took any, so we. Um, we're disappointed we never walked away with anything. Um, but again, ours is a slow build, so we need to be kind of realistic of where we're at. But the aim was three points, and we came away with a point, and, and we're not very happy with it, and disappointed, to be honest with you. It was Gart Cairn that were the winners of the weekend. Obviously, they go top of the table in 15 yep. points. A 3-0 win away to Stirling Uni, Moran, Dion Brown, and Amy Robertson with the three goals. Mm-hmm. Really good away display is, I mean... To go top of the table, newly promoted, it's the say it. You've got Alexa Brown and Robertson, who are terrific and experienced strikers that are coming in. Great result for Gart here. Well, of course it is, especially away at Stirling. Stirling's had a great start to the season. Um, Niall's doing a good job, and it's always a difficult place to go and pick up points, whether you're on the grass or the Astro over there. So, um, good result, steady, very steady team, and. They've got some experience in there who who will see them well, and it's it's only going to stand them in good stead. So I'm no surprised to see the two of the names on the score sheet. To be honest with you, Brown and Robertson, as you mentioned there, there. Yeah. Amy's a fantastic young striker, and Dion's he's a really good striker as well. So mm-hmm. I'd be doing them a disservice if I said they weren't. They're two yeah. top strikers. So. Absolutely, and it's going to be vital for a team like Garkin as well, who are obviously now the, they'll be wanting promotion, they'll be wanting to to move up the leagues and to, you, these are the games you need to win if you want to do that you need to go to a place like Stirling yep. which isn't easy and win and to win emphatically the 3 nothing's a big result but the game of the day undoubtedly in that division was Montrose 3 bottom year 2 two teams probably very similar in terms of quality trialist with a double but we know certainly that it was London Pollard because yes. they put out that I don't I don't under, I don't know the rules of trialist I was actually meaning to ask a couple of people about it if you have a trialist in I'm pretty sure you can't Reveal who they are until we sign them. Is that right? I think so. I, I was think so. At that because obviously we. Don't I don't. Really... I don't mean to sit in the fence, but but I think so. Um, it's a difficult one, really. I've, we've had this conversation as well, and I think certainly if we're amalgamating into a professional league, um, that I know on the men's side of the game you can't play trialists, and that you can, you definitely can't name them. Um, but it was weird and listen, it's. Interesting. That's what I'm going to say. Uh, I, mean, I can't really say much else about it, to be honest. Yeah, but from a Montrose perspective as well, for the, the trial is to score a double. I mean, mm-hmm. that's, you can't ask for a better trial. No, that. she's a proven goal scorer as well, so she'll score goals. Um, Very quick, lightning, powerful. Um, She's always going to score goals wherever she plays. So, no, listen, it's fantastic. Um, I don't mean to sit on the fence about it too much, but... I don't want to get my fingers burnt at the same time. So ah, yeah, it's um, a difficult one. And I, I, yeah. I'm just wondering because I, I know for yeah. the kind of player of the week thing we doing that, I don't think that I think I don't think you can name your trialist. But again, if it's interesting. Yeah. What interests me about this game is all five goals were took place in the first half. So the second half must have been a very quiet really? affair. Yeah. Oh wow. I never knew that to be honest with you. I knew the score, but I never knew it was. Yeah, Montrose went 2-0 up, uh, Boromir brought it back to 2-2, Beg and Hinchcliffe were the goals for Boromir at Montrose. I think it was Cully that got the third goal for Montrose and they saw yeah. it out in 1-3-2. Uh, takes them to within two points of that Cairn. Again, big big result for Montrose. Yeah, huge result. And they're another good side. They're they're good at what they do and they're effective in what they do. And again, they've got some fantastically experienced players in their squad. Um, but you can't, Burmuir are on our top side as well. We showed Absolutely. that last year. So I think what Susie and my <coughs> staff and that's done in there and the girls in at Burmuir, they, this is why it's so difficult in this league. There's, if you look from top to bottom, I know there's, there's 13 points of difference, but in a couple of weeks, 13 points can be made up. If everything goes your way, this is what we found out. Uh, maybe not the first season at Glasgow, but the second season, you were a bit like, right, if you can do it. And that's what I meant by everybody saying, because Burramure had pulled away phase at one point after us being clear, but everybody forgot Burramure had games in hand that they had to win, and they'd done that. Yeah. 
Yeah. And they're a good side. I mean, maybe losing Brogan Anderson was a big big loss for them. Um, but they're, they're still a top team. They've got some top players in there. Absolutely. Really top players. So that that score doesn't surprise me. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those. It's a great I, advert. Yeah, I think when I think when the kind of top teams play against each other, you are going to see a lot of tight games. I don't think you're yeah. you're going to see MD run away with this league. I really don't. But the final no. game in SWPL two was, and I quote this: "This is a, a quote I got, a text I got from somebody at the game. The most boring game of the weekend I've been at, and it was about really? four or five. <laughs> St. Johnson yeah. now, come on it now. I don't think a lot happened. Just going by reports, not yeah. a game for the purest. But again." St Johnston, obviously they'll see Gart Kaelin Montrose go above them in the league and probably feel it's two points drop, but mm-hmm. it's certainly better than losing the game. And I think Kilmarnock will probably be the same. I think a point will probably be I think both teams will actually be quite happy with a point, to be honest. Ah, you know, I'm very surprised that none of the two teams have scored because the two teams will get goals in them as well. They certainly so do. It's um it's quite surprising. I know I know Kilmarnock have got a couple of injuries and stuff, but with St Johnston and Come on, look, drawing that nature definitely didn't I think that would be the score that would come out of that one. Again, two good teams with, with good technical staff behind them as well and good support. So, all in all, it's a, a great weekend for Gart Cairn, as you said at the start. They've, they've come out the winners of the weekend, to be honest. Yeah, with you. they certainly have. Big result for them, and obviously, they, they are clear at the top of the league. SWF Championship, I'll just go through some of the results. Inverness 3, Hutchie Vale 0. Driver Athletic 2, Air United 2, Renfrew 1, Livingston 4, Morton 1, Rossville 1. Again, we mentioned Gart came with the winners of the SWPL 2. It's undoubtedly that Livingston are the winners of the SWF Championship this weekend. In fact, at 4 1 1 away, away to Renfrew, they go three points clear of Renfrew at the top. Lucy Brown, a double, Dodge and Fish rounding off a really good performance for Livingston. I know a lot of people might. No, really pay attention to the championship, but I think you've got to keep an eye on it because there's some top teams in there. Yeah. Um, and that that result maybe surprised me a wee bit with Renfrew because they've been in a great run. Um, they've been doing really well, but again, it's it's a bit like the SWPL two results can go anyway. You don't know. You can't if you were going to put your your cards on the table and try and predict something, then the chances it might not happen. Yeah. So keep it, keep your cards in your pocket. I was going to say money in your pocket, but we'll not encourage that. So keep yeah. your cards in your pocket. But um, no, listen, Livingston have been the big winners there, and it's certainly a a tough league. Um, we played a couple of the teams for the the championship in pre season just to kind of find our feet and and build relationships with them moving forward in games, and and they were all good games. <laughs> they were yeah. all fantastic games, really good, really entertaining, and went to the wire and. And that's what you're after. That's what you're looking for. Um, yeah, but no, they, they listen. Livingston are the top side as well. Um, another one who's who's very very steady and get some great experience in there as well. Yeah, Inverness go fourth, a three 0 win over Hutchieville. Botham, uh, Kelly, and McCray rounding off a good result for them. Again, just when you're at home, Livingston, uh, Inverness. Sorry, they may have been hoping for more wins on the board, but just to get a three 0 win at home, you can't ask for more than that. Definitely, I think that's where they need to try and make it difficult for teams going up there, um, and I'm sure they will. I think a lot of a lot of people don't like travelling too much, and and to be honest with you, it's a journey I've done a lot of times as a youth player myself, and it was always that long one, but it's made better now that you're not travelling up in a Volkswagen Beetle stuffed in the back it, do you know what <laughs> I mean, and you're going up and they might go up in a bit of luxury, but no, it's a good result for uh, Inverness, and they'll look at it as keep, keeping a clean sheet as well, so they'll be yeah. happy with that. Uh, Rossfield missed the chance to to go above Renfrew. They drew one one away to Morton. Driver a two, Air United two. Air Rachel Scott's on fire scored again. She's been had a great start for Air. I think that's her ninth goal of the season. Yeah. Driver, though, I want to touch on them. Two another draw, a two two. That's a fourth draw in eight games. They're the only team in the league not to win, but they've drew four out of their eight games. So they'll be hoping to turn one of them into a win quickly. Yeah, um, and I think it's, it's always interesting as well when you're. You're new into the environment and they'll certainly push again. It'll be a difficult place for people to go. They're a good site. We'll get good um, excuse me, good staff as well that'll will keep them going. I know Owen quite well who's part of the technical staff and Air are a good site. We played them pre season as well, and that was our first game and, and they're combative. They're they're very combative and they're in your face and they've got some good players as well who can do some damage. As he says, Scott, she's scoring goals, which which always helps when you've got a a striker in form who's scoring goals yeah, takes a absolutely. bit of pressure off everybody else. So yeah, absolutely. and they 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 might look at that as a point, but they'll also look at it as a, a good result away from home. 
Yeah, absolutely. We'll move into League One. We'll just go through the results there. BSC and Indy West was postponed. Edinburgh 4, Falkirk 1, Airdrie Ladies 5, Edinburgh Caledonia 3, West Dyke 3, Stenhouse Muir 1, and St Marin 10, Gaff McNeil. We need to start with St Marin, a massive result for them. 10 0 victory over Giffnock takes them to fourth in the league. You can't ask for more than that. I'm just going to go through the goal scorers. Kelly Ross with four, Kiara McIntyre with three, Caldwell, McLeod, and Morrison rounding off an emphatic 10 0 victory. Good setup in it, St Marin. Really good Aye. setup. I know Kate well, she's very experienced. Um, and she always tries to get the girls playing to, to her style as well. And it's a great setup. So I'm actually, as much as I'm, I'm not happy to see Giff not getting beat by that scoreline, I'm happy for Kate and the girls in at St. Man. Yeah, um, that's the big, big, big scoreline. Um, yeah. And if you go through them, you've not really seen too much of them. So it shows you how far the games come on a wee bit as well. Yeah, absolutely. Edinburgh, 4-1-1 over Falkirk. Rutherford with a double, McLeod and Clark with the goals. It Obviously, Falkirk, that's only their second defeat. Edinburgh keep their unbeaten run going. And again, when you're playing against teams at the top at kind of similar level in the league, to win 4-1, you, it's, you just can't argue with that. It's a great day at the office. Oh, massive day at the office. It's bad. I know Andy really well, their manager, and he's always very organised and he'll have them playing well. But Rutherford, she's deadly. She always has been since her, her development days at Hibs and if you get a chance, the, the likelihood is she's going to score. So it's, you're right, it's a top top result against another team who's, who's run about that top area. So you need, they're the games you need to go and win as well as the, the other ones. But if you can do it emphatically, it puts down a bit of a statement as well. Absolutely. West Ike obviously keep, keeps track on Edinburgh as well. They're still unbeaten. Cochrane, a double and trainer. With the goal, trainer's been in fire as well. I think she scored some like yeah. seven and six. 3-1-1 over Stenhouse Muir. Again, West Dyke, I think they went under the radar just how impressive they started the season. They, they have, and you know, the thing is, everybody looks at names, don't they? They tend to look at names and go, oh, well, they'll do well, they'll do well. And they, there's always somebody that will fly under the radar. Um, and they have, they've had a great start to the season. And for their sake, long may it continue. Yeah, absolutely. We've got gutted for Stenny because they're a good good club as well. But yeah. that's a good result. Definitely. Final result, Airdrie 5, Edinburgh Cali 3, Murray with 2, trialist again, flying over, scoring 2 goals again at <laughs> this league. I think trialist has scored in every league this weekend, but... Uh, it must be a record, eh? It must That's be, to be a record, must be. And to score a double, and I mean, our player of the week is just going to be trialist, trialist, trialist. <laughs> <it's>, uh... <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, <laughs> the way, didn't we? But, I mean, big result for Airdrie, that takes him to 8 yeah, points from 8 it. games. Just getting that win against a team like Edinburgh Caledonia, Great game by all reports, uh, an eight goal thriller, and it's good. It would be good for Airdrie to be in the, the winning end of that. Mm -hmm. It looks like a crack of a game as well. And they're another team that we linked closely with Glasgow last season. The Airdrie sending some young players out on loan. So, um, good, great result for them, especially at home. And Edinburgh Cali are always a tough side to play. We yeah. found that out a few years back at Glasgow City with the development team in the cup. They're a tough mm -hmm. side there. They're fit, they're athletic. And, or they certainly were back then, but they're a very, very tough side, very experienced side as well. Yeah, absolutely. And that obviously mean, uh, rounds up our, our review of the weekend action. We've obviously got a couple of midweek games to touch on. Uh, Aberdeen play Hibs at Balmour on Wednesday night. Uh, Tuesday night, uh, Wednesday night, sorry, ignore me. Mm -hmm. But again, two teams probably in big need of a victory. How do you see that going? I think my heart and my head are swaying towards Hibs for this one. Um, I think they'll take a bit of belief but they've also got a bit of momentum as well um, you would like to see Aberdeen getting some points but I think they're going to come up against a, a hip side who are starting to click um, and who are starting to get there but again, funny things have happened in football and Aberdeen have took points for Hibs in the past so yeah. I wouldn't put that past them so I've quite firmly sat my bum on the fence there mate, didn't I? Sorry either team, that. either team wins that. <laughs> either either, either yeah. team wins that. It's a massive result for them because Aberdeen obviously been the first one of the season. But Hibs, Hibs win it would mean they go up obviously the table just in amongst that. I think Hibs will probably have been have been wanting to get more points. But as you say, I just think it's beginning to come together. I, I do fancy Hibs to win that game. Mm -hmm. The day United versus Celtic at Cursey Park. I fancy Celtic just to to win again. I, I, I certainly don't think the day United will make it easy, but I do think Celtic are just in a lot of form now. And free scoring, I think they'll go there and win. Yeah, I, I find it hard to disagree with you. I think United will certainly make it difficult for them, especially at Gussie. Um, they're used to it and 
if the if the weather takes a wee turn as well, then the conditions could play their way. They'll certainly be physical and they'll be aggressive in their play as well. And they'll be be very tough to break down and as you said, Celtic. Just get this knack just now into it where you can't you know, see them scoring in a game. So it's um they'll certainly make life difficult for Dundee United, but and the other end you're hoping United make a game mate, as well. Yeah, absolutely. Glasgow City go to Glasgow women at Clifton Hill. It's hard to see this being anything other than a, an emphatic Glasgow City one. Yeah, um, I think that's that's has been. We can really be respectful of that one. Clifton Hill's a interesting venue as well. Mm. Um, obviously, is notorious for the, the. I think the pitch has been looking fantastic recently, but you know that can change a wee bit, especially in the grass. So that might be a bit of a leveler. But I think you're right. I think you can only see a City win coming out of that one. Yeah, absolutely. One especially game with in- Glasgow missing two big players, I think. They could possibly be missing Siobhan Honeyman and Shelley Campbell as well. So yeah, I think it's going to be two big players for them. It's going to be a struggle, but I mean, I, I do think Glasgow City will win that comfortably. Mm-hmm. That game in SWPL two, one game, Bottom Your Thistle versus Gart Cairn at Meggett Land in Edinburgh. Huge game, huge, massive game. Bottom Your, a win for Bottom Your would certainly put them where they want to be. But Gart, I mean, Gart Cairn have also got a big chance to extend the lead. Definitely, and I think it's always a difficult place to go at Meggett Land. Um, I was actually relieved when they moved away from Megatland, to be honest with you. I hate Megatland with <laughs> a passion. Sorry, Burramuir, but it was always a difficult venue to go. Um, very difficult place to go. I mean, last season we went there and get three win, uh, two wins, but we had to fight for it. We had to earn it. Um, and I can see this game being a bit... I would actually pick this game as being the game of the week for me mm-hmm. over the other, the other ones. I mean, no disrespect to any of them, but I think this one holds a wee bit more value in terms of the league being a bit tight and stuff. Whereas this, you look at Glasgow and the Glasgow women, Glasgow City, Dundee United, Celtic, Aberdeen, Hibs, you're kind of thinking, right, it could be a straightforward three away wins here. Whereas this one, it'll be hard to call and Gart Cairn will go full of confidence, but I don't think Borough Muir eh, will be shy of confidence either because they're the right good side, so... Nah, Especially certainly. at home, they'll fancy themselves. Certainly not, but it's going to be a busy midweek. We will be, yeah. we'll have a, a women's football roundup on Friday, just uh, obviously looking at the midweek games. We'll do that on the site, and I think we'll get into Friday. Queen's Park, I want to, before we wrap up the show, I just want to, the next four fixtures, I mean, these could these could be big for you. Is it away to Gart Cairn, away to Kilmarnock, home to St. Johnson, and home to Boromir before the end, before December? Four mm. massive games. How do you How do you go about them? Pick ourselves back up for, for yesterday first and foremost. We need to we keep saying to the players we need to keep looking forward. We you can't afford to to look backwards. Um and again, we're we're still in the middle of a build. And all the teams that you've mentioned there have had steady bases to go off of. Mm-hmm. So um difficult opponents in every one of them, but we'll certainly go and, and make a game of them. Um as you said there, there's two away games and, and two two home games in there. So We'll look to, to implement our ways that we want to play as well, which has been coming across, but we now need to start putting points on the board. We need to start getting results as well. So it's a it's a big job for us, um, one that we're no disillusioned with, but at the same time, we know we need to start getting points on the board to yeah, make it well, more attractive. Absolutely. We're wishing you all the best for the season ahead, Craig. It's been Thank an absolute you. pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you very much for joining me. Thanks very much, mate. All the best. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone, that's tuned in. Please follow our social media channels for consistent women's football coverage and subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel for our podcast every week. We'll be back next week with a new show. Thanks very much, everyone. See you soon. Cheers. Mm-hmm.